Hi, this is Gregor from Baseball.com and this is part two of my base recording series here on this channel. And in this episode, I will talk about a very common question that I think exists in the world somewhere um, as a common question. Uh, basically, I'm talking about when you have everything that you need to do some basic good uh, home base recording. Uh, that means you have a base, you have a computer, you have an audio interface, you have a pair of speakers or maybe decent headphones. Um, what is the next thing to get whenever you want to upgrade your set? So there are a lot of uh, hardware, especially those kind of things out there, and you might be confused with all these things. Is it preamps? Is it compressors? Is it whatever? Um, I think uh, no matter who to what kind of studio guy you're talking, everyone who is working in a professional studio environment will give you exactly the same answer. It's definitely get a decent mic preamp. You might wonder why I'm saying mic preamp and not bass preamp. That's uh, the simple answer is uh, in, in the studio, there are no bass preamps. There are preamps, they are used for everything and they're usually called uh, mic preamps. Uh, but I have a bass preamp and I have a preamp in my bass amp and it has a DI out, isn't it the same? No, it's not. Um, I don't know all the differences, but they are definitely, they sound a lot different. Uh, when I started doing this, I tried a lot of uh, bass preamps that I had around and, and all the amps that I had. And some sounded really good for recording, some not so much, but when I first under started to understand this topic and got into trying decent recording preamps, I figured out what a huge difference this makes. And uh, on the technical sides, it's mainly because uh, decent microphone preamps, they have uh, so-called uh, transformers for inputs and outputs in them. And um, those will give your bass sound a lot of depth and, and it will just, yeah, it will make it sound bigger and more professional. And some call it, uh, they, they will add some weight to your bass tones. And um, we don't have to, go into details there, what it, what the technical differences it makes, uh, just believe me and uh, just make some comparisons on your own. Go, go to a decent music store that uh, yeah, sells uh, decent recording gear and just try some out. Bring a computer, maybe like a mobile interface, if that's possible, a pair, a pair of headphones, just stuff that you know and uh, connect a couple of preamps uh, uh, in front of the setup and you will be very surprised uh, what they sound like. And uh, in this video, I'm going to show you the preamps that we're using here in the studio to create all the demos, uh, all the, the videos that we're doing here. And uh, I, I think it's very practical because the stuff that I'm using here that I've purchased for the studio are basically the ones that you will find in every studio, uh, except for one, but uh, we will talk about this in a minute. Um, the most common preamps, so to say, that you find in the professional recording studios are always Neves and APIs. These are the basics um, that you will find everywhere. And and the most other preamps on the market are based on those circuits, actually. And of course, there's there's millions of other preamps out there. And some people have some very specific needs and, and, and uh, very specific tastes uh, of maybe some some go for tube stuff and of course this is all available and this is all possible and you can try it out and maybe it's for you but uh, if you want to learn the basics stick with me uh, check this video out and you will hopefully learn uh, what this is all about um the the ones that i'm using here is the bae 1073 dmp sounds a bit technical it is basically uh, a copy of the neve 1073 uh, consoles these were like the huge uh, recording mixing consoles that uh, stood in these old amazing studios with these amazing analog sounds and this is basically the consoles had of course the preamp and eq and, and a lot of routing stuff in them uh, this is the very basic version this is just the preamp all you have is a gain control in this case uh, something like a master it's not, not it's not really a master it's more like a dim uh, pot to to make some fine adjustments uh, but uh, yeah that's basically uh, this thing sounds amazing it's kind of expensive i have to warn you but there are other solutions uh, that are not as expensive as this one which uh, go into the same direction the other one uh, as i mentioned before is the api uh, typically the 312 uh, these also come from these huge api consoles and api um, is very much known for uh, delivering a much cleaner sound. Uh, Neve is more goes more, I would say, more into the vintage direction. They they give you a really nice uh, low mid bump and and make uh, things yeah I think very juicy and very warm and nice and and mellow. These are really cool for vintage sounds. Also for modern stuff, you can use them as well. But um, I think their main qualities are these nice warm organic sounds. Uh, the API goes much more, uh, is, a, is a faster preamp. It's, it's just when you record with it and don't use any tone stuff and um, you sit in front of the speaker, it's just hitting you in your face all the time. It's super direct. It's very what I would call modern and super clean and you can record um, 
yeah especially modern basses very well with this and uh, for this i'm using the uh, warm audio tone beast uh, warm audio is an american company which makes very affordable uh, uh, copies of these high-end uh, very expensive uh, preamps and they also just released a uh, very affordable version of the 1073 which which costs only half as much as the, as the one that i'm using and they even have a version with eq which is really cool which i hopefully get to check out very soon however uh, the tone beast is uh, based on the api preamp uh, it sounds amazing um what you have to know about apis uh, in general they only have uh, a gain control that's all they have of course they have some switching like like uh, phantom power and stuff like this because these preamps are of course used for all kinds of uh, analog audio inputs but uh, for us, for, as bass players, it's of course only interesting. We need these high set inputs, that's what they're called, like uh, basically the guitar and bass inputs. And then these preamps basically work like in the DI box with a gain control. And what's cool about the, the Tone Beast is, uh, in addition to the gain control, you have a master control, which is very important because when you're, especially when you're recording um, stuff with a very hot output and you want to use the preamp to the full extent and it's often that means you want to drive it a bit hard a bit louder because that's when when you when you're getting into the sweet spots of the preamps it can be way too loud for your interface to record so the signal is too hot and and all that arrives at your computer at the interface is distortion you don't want to have that that's why it's always really cool to find an api kind of preamp that has also a master control that allows you to to run the gain and to make it sound as good as possible and then adjust the master to the volume that works for your setup. And in addition to that, the API that I'm using or the tone beast that I'm using has a tone section, uh, which is for me kind of a love hate relationship thing. I love it, what, what you can do with it and how it sounds. Uh, but on the other hand, I'm very much a plug and play guy because when we're recording here, um, I think uh, when you take too much time to adjust your sounds, uh, it will maybe sound better, but uh, sometimes the creative juices are flowing and they will just, yeah, they will just uh, dim a little bit. And uh, that's why I always, uh, my go-to personally is the is the Neve because uh, it's just plug and play, it's amazing and it sounds cool. The Tone Beast I use for different things, but uh, this we, we will talk about la later about the applications, so where I'm using those especially, but however, uh, this preamp is super amazing. Uh, it sounds very, very straight in your face and uh, that's what I like about it. The third uh, preamp that I'm using here in the studio or we are using is not really a preamp, it's rather a DI box and uh, it's also passive, which is super weird. Uh, I heard about this uh, on, on a channel of a friend of mine, Warren Durot from Produce Like a Pro. He's doing a lot of uh, interviews with amazing recording engineers and, 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 and uh, all kind of guys who are working in the recording industry. He's doing a lot of tutorials about gear and mixing techniques. And if you're in this kind of stuff, uh, definitely go check out this channel. It's, it's uh, worth a million bucks and it's free, of course, like everything on YouTube. And uh, uh, he at one point came uh, in a video for the first time with the spray and said this is something that I found and I'm totally amazed. Uh, it's just a DI box and I'm recording bass through it and has an amazing portion of low end and I thought hey sounds interesting and Motown DI. Uh, uh, I did a little bit of research what it is and found out that the company Acme, I hope that it's how, how that's, uh, it's pronounced, I think they are from Chicago or so, somewhere in the states at least. and. Um, they basically bent, went to the Motown studio and found this original uh, device that was standing in the middle of the recording room. So the entire uh, Motown Funk Brothers band recorded in one room and there was a huge like a console in the middle of the room, like a huge DI box where everyone plugged the instruments into, um, the, at least the ones that they recorded straight. And uh, those had uh, huge uh, transformers in them, which made basically the entire sound that we are used to. And I thought, okay, this is uh, this is basically the James James machine. So uh, let me try it out. I have to say it's ridiculous expensive for the iBox. Here in Germany, it's like 500 bucks, a bit more than 500 bucks, which I would usually never pay these amounts for a passive DI. And <laughs> I didn't even know that it's passive. It arrived here and I was confused. There's no um, power input. There is no, uh, it doesn't even take uh, phantom power. And yeah, I had to experiment a bit to find out what it really is. And the website of the company doesn't really tell what it is, which is a little bit weird. So uh, Mr. Sutton, if you see this, please do some adjustments on your website. It's super weird that we can't find out anything what this really is. You're, you're talking about where the idea comes from, but uh, I think uh, for the for the guys working in the studios, it's very helpful to know a little bit about the, about the technical backgrounds, how to use this thing actually. Um, so it's just the the eye. You go in with your bass, you go out with the XLR, and that's it. It has this control, but there seems to be some sort of a 
um, what is this called? These kind of things that burn the uh, an attenuator that basically you can put this uh, thing, I guess, between an amp and a cabinet, and then you can adjust the volume, something like that. I've never tried it. I like this. I I don't need this function, but uh, it seems to be a part of the thing. However, uh, this thing is amazing. Um, when I first started using it, I thought, okay, that's a decent sounding Passive DI box, which is already a surprise because I think in a studio environment, Passive DI boxes don't really have a space uh, because really like the really, really good ones, like a Radial JDI, which is very commonly used. It's like the most used DI box in live uh, scenarios. I think in the studio, when you compare it to, or when you use it along with decent preamps, you just, it just doesn't sound very good. Sorry if I'm crushing your dreams right now. If you pla were planning on using one of those, but uh, just I, I did. I, I, at least I don't like it. And uh, this sounded good. And then I thought, okay, what's the James Jamerson thing? Because it, it didn't really sound fat or anything. And uh, I yeah, we used it a couple of times. It's super clean. Uh, that's basically something that I could can say about it. And uh, what it's really good for, I figured out when we uh, connected for the first time a bass that was very, very fat, had a lot of low mids, a lot of low end, too much basically, which is usually the case for sometimes for fretless basses, often for P basses with flat one strings, these kind of scenarios. Also sometimes modern basses, which we yeah, had these mo modern American, I would call them uh, a bass EQs that s sometimes have like the frequency of the bass control at something like 20. 30 hertz like Aguilar also the dark glass uh, tone capsule for example if you're using dot a lot uh, this a lot and you 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 like to add a lot of bases which sounds definitely cool but it's often hard to process in a recording setup um, this is the answer uh, this will thin your base out in a good way uh, it, it, it's, it, your base will not sound uh, thin and all at all but it will you you will be, be able to record these and I always had a, a lot of issues recording um, P bases with flat one strings because I, I, I love how they sound and and usually you would put a microphone in front of an amp and record it from there but uh, I I just I like the direct sound of, of uh, the eye recording direct recording and I always had issues finding yeah techniques to make this work and never worked it always you always have these distortion sounds and i never liked the results and until i tried this one for the first time i was blown away and since then uh yeah i was just ordering it to try it out i wasn't sure if i was gonna keep it because it's as i said it's very expensive but when i figured this out yeah this i i knew uh, instantly that this thing will stay and probably forever because it's just amazing however that was a lot of talk for just the intro of the video uh what we will do now is uh we will take uh, three of the main bases uh, that we're using here in the studio jazz bass a p bass and an active bass with emg pickups and an active uh, uh, eq and we, go we will go through all these uh, three preamps and uh, in the first section that will follow now um I will show you each uh, sound clip and tell a little bit about uh, maybe what what to listen to so you, you get kind of an idea what what's happening here and uh, then in the second and final part uh, you will get to hear all the sound samples in a row without me talking and then you can have your direct a b comparisons so let's get it started uh, and at this point uh, you will definitely need a set of decent headphones or speakers uh, to watch this when you're just uh, watching this on your phone or on your laptop or whatever uh, you will be missing out on everything and uh, another thing I might have to add uh, if you can't hear differences um, don't be frustrated. Uh, I, co I can com completely can understand that, that you will find super weird why uh, or some of you will find super weird what will happen now because I will talk about differences and you will not be able to hear them. Um, it was like me when I started uh, working in recording stuff and, and started to figure all this stuff out. I try tried different preamps. There were different, but I couldn't really tell which one is better and which is worse or um, for different scenarios, you really have to start to adjust your ears and this only works with practicing and definitely when you play them by yourself and you have a set of headphones on, you will hear massive differences. Uh, it's always interesting when you record those and then you listen back, especially what we did now, we recorded the same uh, leaks again and again through this uh, preamps. They actually don't sound uh, that different in the uh, results. So you might think, why why does it make sense at all? Uh, well, as I think especially when you're recording and you have an amazing sound while tracking on your ears, um, this is definitely inspiration to play also better. And yeah, uh, let's get started. <laughs> P 
keybase that you've just heard uh, is built uh, by my friend Alice Vigodil in the Czech Republic and uh, he's a custom builder and he made this base especially for me after a couple of specifications that I gave him and it turned out amazing. Um, I'm talking, if you want to find out more about the bases, uh, there, there is a studio tour video uh, that I, if I think, if I reminded, I will link uh, in the video description below. There I'm talking about all the studio bases that we're using, so I'm not talking too much about the bases here, just some general specifications. It's a P base, uh, Alder Body, Maple Neck, Rosewood Fingerboard, so it's all the standard things that you would expect from a 60s kind of uh, P base. And this one has a DR Pure Plus uh, strings on it, which where when we recorded it maybe for a couple of months on the base already. But uh, yeah, you can hear they still have uh, enough uh, treble uh, frequencies, which is very uh, nice about these strings. Uh, however, the combination with the Neef uh, or with the BAE 1073 is, I think, a very classic uh, P basses go very well with these Neef PMs because both kind of go into this uh, vintage direction. Uh, but don't get me wrong, don't think that vintage is always like like muddy sounding or warm sounding or uh, this can this preamp can actually sound also very bright and very direct if you uh, yeah, hook bases to, up to it that, that sound this way. And uh, one thing that I appreciate, and I guess everyone who's using those appreciates very much is that how many little details they are figuring out. There are so many overtones and so many little things that, that happen in your bass tone that would, will eventually not be transferred if you're using like a regular bass preamp or a lot of other preamps. And that's one thing I like about this. And I, as you heard, uh, this is a very nice sounding combination. And uh, one thing that I should mention, uh, the, the sound samples that you're hearing are completely naked. So there's no processing on them at all. There's no compression, no limiter, no EQ, nothing. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, YouTube adds a little bit of compression, but this is not the same kind of compression that you would use uh, in, in a DAW or, or uh, outboard gear like this one. Um, this compression from YouTube is only to make the files smaller but not actually to uh, compress the sound uh, to, to make the, the uh, yeah this kind of stuff that you're doing in the studio. However, uh, let's go on with the next preamp. <laughs> Yeah, the Tone Beast is also an excellent choice, I think, for this P bass. Uh, um, I would say the difference to the Neve is it has a little bit more low end in this case. Uh, it has the mids are a little thinner, and, and mids are generally something that's very uh, well known for the Neves that they have a lot of mids. That's that's basically the thing. And and I would say the Tone Beast also has a little. It's a little bit brighter in the in, on, on the top end, and it seems to be faster and more direct sounding. And this is what I was talking about earlier that the difference between API and Neve that API I always seems a little bit more uh, straight in your face. Next one. Yeah, the Motone DI is, I think, very surprising also with this P bass. I think it's not the tone that I would like to record uh, with this kind of bass because it has these uh, round on strings and the tone control is completely open. So it, it, for a P bass tone, it delivers a lot of treble. We just did that to, to, uh, because I think treble frequencies are very important to showcase also with these preamp comparisons. However, um, it's very surprising how well it actually sounds. And I would, would say it's actually the, the truest and the most natural sound uh, that you've just heard of the P bass itself. Maybe not the best recording sound for the space, but it, I think it actually works very well. And uh, I think also it has a stunning dynamic range. So so the difference between quiet and loud notes is that there, there seems to be even less compression. Uh, the preamps sometimes with these transformers add a little bit of compression and uh, this seems to be a very natural uh, sounding preamp.
The Space ist mein Sandberg California TT4 Masterpiece, uh, basically Sandberg Base, and uh, which is designed to sound very much like a like an old Fender, but it doesn't because it's a Sandberg. They're using heavier woods and uh, yeah, which which makes the sound I think much more modern. Uh, I'm using Klopman pickups in this model. It was built like this, uh, the 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 60s jazz bass pickups, but the uh, pickup positions in the bass are slightly different. That's why it sounds brighter, definitely, than any Fender bass would ever sound, and Yeah, I think uh, this is very, it's just an amazing bass. Definitely the favorite uh, of all the ones that I have uh, here in my studio. Uh, the combination with the Neve, again, uh, it goes very well for this bass. It's kind of my go-to uh, preamp because the bass itself already is very bright sounding. And uh, so I don't need uh, those which make it even brighter. Eventually, uh, the Neve just uh, goes very well with this and um, yeah. Uh, funny thing also with the Neve, uh, basically we're using the same a gain setting for all bases ex except we have like a really loud or really quiet bass but in every other case it's i think the the 35 whatever db or what it means position um it's staying there yeah 35 <laughs> it's staying there all the time and yeah so basically i don't even it has only one control and i don't even need it so that's the cool thing about the neve so uh the warm audio hmm. For listening back i have to say this should be my go-to for the jazz bass uh, because i think it, it, it's uh, it, it's working a little bit better but i'm just i'm a bit of a lazy guy uh, and as i said the neve is the is, the, is a plug and play thing uh, here with the tone control um you can switch it off but uh, you, you but when you're using this preamp you want to use the tone preamp because uh, the tone control because it sounds so amazing uh I have to talk with warm audio some because they 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 also make those uh, without the tone control and they also make like a new one with uh, just four API sections in it which is would be perfect for for the system that I'm using here. However, uh, it sounds really cool. Uh, it's it's yeah, it's it's definitely a little bit brighter and it sounds cleaner uh, with the jazz bass, which uh, yeah, I, I I would say after listening back, I definitely prefer over the over the Neve. Uh, next one. Yeah, the Motown DI again, very clean, uh, huge dynamic range, also works really well with the jazz bass. I'm very surprised. They all work very well together. And uh, that's what I said. I hope for, uh, I hope I said it uh, in, the, in, the, in the first part because I recorded a lot of parts. I don't know if I said everything in this part of the recording. Um, I think uh, with a good bass uh, will sound good through every preamp and a good preamp will also be, be able to work with any kind of bass. That's why it's sometimes really hard to choose which one to pick and what we're doing when we're recording here is we really uh, we get any kind of bass that we're using for this particular session and we plug it into every one and usually um, you know right away when you plug in when you have heard all three and, and you know right away which, which one is the right one for each bass or depending also on the tune that you want to play and and sometimes even in the recording session we're changing preamps when for example last this year and we record something super heavy with a lot of distortion uh, we might go for the neve because uh, it doesn't emphasize all these high end treble things that can sound a little bit ugly with uh, lots of distortion sometimes and then we uh, the next sample is something uh, clean with lots of tapping with overtones then uh, i would definitely go to the warm audio or to the to the motor on the eye because they will emphasize these uh, overtones much better and yeah it's nice to have uh, yeah a selection as we have here but um, I think if this was just for me for my home recording fun whatever and not uh, as the business and, and and the studio that we are we are here or I am owning here and and working with the other guys I probably had only one of them and don't ask me which one I don't I really don't know probably the Neve because I'm lazy but yeah they're they're all amazing uh, however uh, next one This 
Space ist äh, die Supra Sapphire Deluxe Four String Bobinga Top. Uh, it has uh, MG Pickups. It has a Mike Pope preamp. The space just we I had it here like last year, late summer, somewhere for a review, and uh, I was so much blown away by this bass, how well it sounds. And I, I was looking for a bright sounding bass for like tapping stuff uh, for, for demos for a while, and I had a couple of basses here that I really liked, and then this bass came, and it was just it crushed all the other ones that I was thinking about, and. Uh, yeah, now like half a year later, I I bought it because it's I it just I sent it back because it's it's kind of an expensive base and I re usually don't buy super expensive stuff. I like quality and I, I I'm, I'm willing to spend money on good stuff, but not like four grand kind of money for stuff. But uh, this base was I couldn't get it off my head and and now I I bought it. Yeah. Because sometimes you have to do these kind of things. However, uh, this base is super, super bright, and uh, uh, what this this will is actually the, the hardest one to compare the preamps because it has this 18 volt preamp in it. It has these active uh, pickups. It already is pretty much a preamp, the base itself, and uh, which which kind of overrides slightly the the functions that those have. So uh, this base actually sounds very similar with all these uh, preamps. Um, this is not a general thing. Uh, you have to keep in mind that especially the active pickups make a, a lot of make a huge difference here. When you have an active base, it usually means that you have passive pickups with an active EQ, and those were uh, work very different. I just wanted to use this bass because this is one that we are using in the studio here a lot or will use uh, much more yet, of course, in, 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 the, in the future in, in our videos here and that you will get to hear a lot. So I think it makes sense to use this one in the comparison and not a bass that I will send back to uh, the manufacturer just because it's here for a demo uh, in, in the moment. However, um, with the BAE works perfectly fine and so will be the next sound sample, I guess. Let's check it out. <laughs> It's interesting. I have to say, the Neve had a little bit of more details in the in the in the uh, in the treble section up there. there. There was a little of these little sounds like strings scratching and overtones. I think they they were a little a bit more audible with the Neve, but uh, this actually also works very well and has a little bit uh, of a of a, a low mid or maybe like a bass bump, uh, which also sounds really cool. Next one. <laughs> Yeah, the Motown DI also works really well with the space. Uh, for my taste, maybe it's a little bit too direct, a little bit too dry. Uh, I, I think for the space, I definitely prefer the Neve, uh, so the BAE, so to say, because it adds a little bit of warmth and a bit of an organic tone to a. Yeah, well, it, the super active bass tends to sound a little bit sterile. This is what I was actually looking for a bass sounding exactly like this with lots of overtones. And uh, yeah, I think uh, this is the best combination. Um, these were all the sound samples. Um, I hope you found this uh, useful so far. I, I hope I didn't talk too much and, and you, you could follow me a little bit. Um, now we'll follow the last part where I give you the sound samples again and in a row that you have a chance to compare, and to compare them directly. Uh, just one more thing that I think needs to be added at this point. Uh, some of you might, uh, yeah, of course, do a bass recording already. That might be the reason why you're watching this video. So I guess all of you are bass recording already and you might be familiar with plugins. And uh, when you're buying some interfaces, you get uh, packages from different plugin manufacturers and you will notice that you already own those things. You know, your own APIs and Neves in there and you will ask, why would I need uh, these outboard preamps if I have these preamps as a plugin. Um, I'm using these plugins as well, I have to say, almost on every uh, uh, sound sample that we're recording. Uh, I love, uh, for example, the Slate um, mixing, what it's called, mixing rack, 
mix rack or so i don't know uh, it's, it's just a plugin where you have a good bunch of uh, preamps you have uh, of course api you have the neve you have a lot of different tube uh, preamps in there you have eqs and compressors and all the good stuff and, and i think really really good sounding plugins but this is still not the same as using outboard gear um because these preamps will influence the tone that you're recording into your interfaces so the, your bass already sounds much better when you're recording um, of course these plugins uh, will simulate this and some of this will actually uh, simulate these sounds very good but um, they will never bring it up to this level that uh, real preamps will, will give you and I'm not uh, saying this to sell preamps because I don't sell preamps it's just something I've, I did a lot of comparisons um, plugging my bass directly into the interface trying the trying the plugins uh, because when i yeah i started yeah i started with plugins relatively late in my recording career only just recently like in the last two years or so that i uh, yeah extensively uh, started to use plugins and uh, i love them and, and the possibilities they give me to in post-production to to work on these things and but uh, it's really just it's not the same uh, when you record your bass into the interface with these plugins you you will not achieve the same results as you achieve going through one of those recording in your interface and doing nothing with it it will definitely sound better and even if i record through any of those i will there, there's a good chance that i will later uh, put a, a plugin of exactly the preamp again on the signal which uh, might sound ridiculous to you right now but uh, when you try it out you will find out that this is actually a lot of fun and makes sense and and I, what i really often do is i record stuff with the neve and later put an api plugin on it to to open up these treble things that uh, the apis have and the neve sometimes don't have in combination with a couple of bases um you also should uh, uh, keep in mind that every bass has a different uh, impedance on the output so they will they will just every bass works different with these kind of preamps and so it yeah it just you, you will definitely get different results than going into the same preamp that is in your interface uh, uh, again and again and again and depending on the quality of the interface you're using you might have really good uh, preamps in there and they will also be worth to take in consideration when you're recording I'm not doing that to be honest maybe I should I just bought a new interface a couple of months ago I haven't even tried the the <laughs> to, to be honest it's the Apogee element 46 I haven't even tried the uh, the the uh, preamps in this interface uh, I used uh, another Apogee uh, before that and the preamps in there sound really sweet and I love them but when I again when I started to using those I just uh, yeah I, I stopped using the, the ones that were, came into the interface with the interface because it's just a different kind of quality and also uh, here you get some things to adjust and yeah uh that's it i hope you found this somehow useful uh i i hope yeah however um just let me know in the comments if you want to uh, hear more of these kind of videos uh, l learn more about bass recording i can imagine doing uh, an episode about plugins about uh, general techniques maybe for recording some some additional gear that might be useful and um yeah um yeah uh and the next one, as I uh, already mentioned in the first video, sorry if I'm stuttering a little bit in this video, uh, these are these uh, videos here are completely unscripted, unlike uh, all the reviews that I'm doing there. Every word that I'm saying there is scripted and, and I'm just uh, saying each section a hundred times until I get it right and cut it together to a video that is, has a fast pace and is easy to watch. I know this one isn't, but uh, I'm talking free here because this is... Uh, just a fun video for me that I want to do to, to yeah to give some of the knowledge that I've acquired over the years over to you and hopefully you can do something with it. Um, if you have questions regarding any recording topics, leave them in the comment section below. The next episode of the recording series will be in Q and A, where I, will, where I will answer some of the questions that you left in the first episode that was about tracking with uh, headphones or uh, speakers and these kind of things and yeah uh leave some questions for for the q a that you want me to answer and um uh, i think this will be a lot of fun in the next episode there will also be a sponsor and we will have a giveaway so i hope this series can become of a regular thing because I, it's actually a lot of fun for me it's something different i doing these reviews a lot and uh, they're still very exciting i love doing those but yeah i think it's uh interesting to have uh this kind of format where i can just talk free and practice a little bit to not be super weird in front of the camera even though i don't have a text and a script that i can follow all the time 
Ja, uh, yeah, that's it. My name is Gregor. Uh, this is basedworld.com. Subscribe to this channel if you enjoy these kind of videos. Uh, leave a like and uh, that's it. Uh, see you next time. Bye bye. Mm-hmm. <laughs>